Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, Rocio Santa Cruz. Joining us today is City of Riverside Mayor and AQMD Governing Board Member, Ron Loveridge. Mayor Loveridge, thank you for joining us. I'm delighted to, to be here and join you this morning. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, can you tell us about what your goals and priorities are for being on the AQMD Governing Board? First came to uh, Southern California in 1965 and uh, from Northern California and was really appalled and dismayed at what I saw, what I felt in terms of, uh, in terms of air pollution. The smog was terrible. And uh, I didn't understand, at least as a, as a political scientist, why people accepted this. And, uh, and so that my first engagement of air quality was the question is, well, why do people accept boats here and what can be done? Um, I represent an inland city of some 300,000, represent the cities of, of, of River, uh, Riverside County. We've been a downwind county, and for too many years, uh, air pollution has been a level that, in my judgment, is not acceptable for public health and for quality of life. And so my goal as, as, as a board member was to try to lessen, reduce, <laughs> constrain, limit uh, the kind of pollution that residents of my city and other cities in, in, in Riverside County breathe. California High Speed Rail is under development to relieve congestion and reduce driving time for workers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the High Speed Rail is a extraordinary initiative before the state of California. It is not uh, without controversy, and but what it represents, I think, is one of the major kind of uh, technological alternatives for the future of the state. Um, uh, it's a it's a transportation choice. Uh, it's a it's a way of connecting to connecting regions. Uh, it is a way of for the economy of state of California to come of age. Uh, just finished a book by Richard Florida called The Great Reset, and uh, one chapter is devoted to why high speed rail should take place not only in California but across the country. It should be like the uh, Eisenhower's freeway systems uh, in, in in the late 50s. The same objective nationally should be for high-speed rail. Other, in Europe it's here, in Asia it's here. It is time the United States made the investments and with that come jobs, that come better transportation and better quality air. Mayor, there's a project where the Riverside Public Works Department in partnership with the Western Riverside Council of Governments is working to develop a neighborhood electric vehicle plan. Can you give us more details on that? Well, you're always sort of ransacking the uh, the scenery for for, for alternatives, uh, to, uh, and uh, this is one one idea among many. But is to try to for for interior trips in the city, why not have uh, uh, very energy efficient vehicles? So you don't need to get in your SUV to go down to the local grocery store, or perhaps to the local park. There are, there are other transportation choices. Uh, we're trying to encourage people to buy low emission cars through kind of. Uh, they're kind of a subsidy. We're trying to figure out how to be a place for electric cars. Uh, we're trying to figure be a walkable community. We're trying to enhance uh, bicycling uh, uh, alternatives. Uh, I think uh, as mayor uh, of Riverside, we're looking at every kind of uh, alternative we can identify, which essentially gets people out of the cars, at least gets out of driving to um, and uh, longer distances. And so that's the neighborhood vehicle is one, one among many alternatives. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an, you know, there are also one I just saw where there are bike stations where, where the, you can get on a bike and ride a bike someplace and leave it there and get another bike and, uh, and take it some other place. And uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be looking at alternatives because I think the future of uh, what we do is, is, is changing. The, uh, the old notion of getting in a car and driving long distances by yourself, I think, is a, is something of the past, and we need to uh, we need to look at future choices. Finally, Mayor, given your extensive leadership in the Riverside area and your long history with the AQMD Governing Board, can you give us some historical perspective on air quality in the Inland Empire since the 1970s? Well, I finished a, a degree at Stanford on August 12th, and drove down to Riverside and been here uh, ever 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 since. And as I said, when I came, air quality was not just bad, it was atrocious. You breathed it you, through your breath, you, you felt it in your lungs, uh, 
you uh, monitor the condition of air by finding out what the, before you had your children go outside. It, and what's and it's really been an extraordinary uh, success story of what's happened uh, from uh, when I came in 65 to the air that I, I find now when I get up in the morning and take a walk. Uh, uh, in my judgment, it's come, it's a success story of regulation. It's a success story for this district, which is the best in the world of what it does. And uh, I'm very proud as a, to be a member of the board. and. Uh, but I think even better, uh, thankful uh, as a resident of Riverside and representing cities in Riverside, uh, what a long distance we've come and how much better air is now than when I first remember it. We've come a long distance, but we also have a long distance to go. And uh, it's not simply board members who come once a month to make decisions at Diamond Bar. It's really decisions that city councils and uh, county and uh, other groups need to make about uh, choices of resources, choices of land use, uh, choices of opportunity. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of what I think is going to be a major effort, continuing effort to clean air and to have a better environment and more sustainable community. Thank you, Mayor Leverage. Thank you. On behalf of AQMD On The Air, thank you for joining us and working together to help clean the air that we breathe.